In this tutorial, I will show you how you can use SnapGene to quickly annotate specific sequences of interest as features. To demonstrate the utility of features within SnapGene, I will firstly import an example sequence. For this example, I will work with the yeast gene known as Vacuola carboxypeptidase Y, or CPY for short. So I will copy the sequence from the yeastgenome.org online database and open the SnapGene window. To add the sequence in SnapGene, I will go to File, New DNA File, then I will paste the sequence in and select OK. To start with, I will create a new feature containing this whole sequence. To do this, I will go to Edit, Select All. Alternatively, I can press Ctrl and A on my keyboard as a shortcut. Now I will go to Features, Add Feature. Since this sequence contains the whole sequence for the CPY gene, I will call this feature CPY. The feature type will be a coding sequence or a CDS. Note that you can use the drop down menu to specify a different feature type if you have one. Because this feature is a CDS, the option to translate this feature in sequence view has been automatically selected. This will now show the amino acid sequence in the sequence view. It's possible to specify the orientation of the feature by using the arrow options, but I will leave this as default. At the bottom, I will enter the product name for my own reference. It is also possible to add additional information about the feature by using the different options in the drop down menu. Finally, I will click OK to create the feature. You will now see a purple arrow that spans the sequence. This indicates the feature annotation. By switching to the features tab, you will see that the CPY feature is listed alongside additional information such as the product and the amino acid sequence. Next, I will show you how you can split a feature into different segments. To do this, I will go to the sequence view. Specifically, I want to highlight the signal peptide of the CPY gene. The signal peptide covers the first 20 amino acids of the product. So I will click on the first amino acid and shift click on the 20th amino acid. This will select the region I am interested in. Now I will go to features, create feature segment. Notice that the CPY feature is now split into two segments. In the first segment, I will call this pre-sequence. I will also change the color of this segment to a rose color so it can be differentiated from the other segments in the feature. Finally, I will click OK to create the segment. Now the pre-sequence is clearly indicated. The CPY gene also has a propeptide that ends at amino acid 111. So I will create another segment for this. I will click on amino acid 21, scroll down and shift click on amino acid 111. Again, I will go to features, create feature segment. This time I will call the segment propeptide and color this segment green. Then I will click OK. Now the propeptide segment can be seen. Since both of these segments can be removed by proteolytic processes, I can also add cleavage arrows to denote the segment boundaries. To do this, I will click on the region immediately after amino acid 20. Then I will go to features, add cleavage site. In the edit features window, I will click OK to create the cleavage site. Now you will see an arrow is visible between the two segments, which denotes the cleavage site. I will repeat this process to add a cleavage site after the propeptide segment. So I will click on the region immediately after amino acid 111, then go to features, add cleavage site, and then click OK in the new window. If you are working with the same feature quite a lot, then it is possible to save it as a custom feature to enable automatic annotations in the future. To do this, I will click on the feature to select it, then go to features, add to common features. With the CPY feature selected, I will click on the add one feature button to save it. Doing this will open the browse common features window. Here you can see all the common features that are saved. You can also remove common features by selecting them and pressing remove. For now, I will just close this window and save the CPY file by going to file, save and saving the file on my computer. To demonstrate automatic feature annotations and how custom features can be identified, I will create a new file by going to File, 
new DNA file. In a text file, I have the sequence for a plasmid PES2 containing the CPY gene. I will copy this sequence and paste it into the SnapGene new DNA file window. I will call the file PES2 CPY and will ensure the option to detect common features is checked. Then I will click OK. SnapGene will then detect common features within this sequence. With the match threshold set at 96%, SnapGene has detected 11 features. If I scroll down, you can see that the CPY custom feature I recently created has been detected with a 100% match. I will select add 11 features to add these to the file. In the map view, I can see the automatically annotated CPY feature. If I want to hide all the features shown, I can click on the show features button to hide these. Clicking on this button again will show the features. Additionally, there is the option to show or hide individual features by going to the features tab. Then you can use the checkboxes to toggle the visibility on or off for specific features. In the last part of this working with features demonstration, I will show you how SnapGene handles a sequence with a lot of features. To do this, I will import a sequence directly from the NCBI database by going to File, Import, NCBI Sequences. I will enter the accession number for the sequence I'm interested in and click Import. This sequence is a complete chromosome from a yeast species and is nearly 700,000 base pairs long. I will hide the description panel by unchecking the option in the lower right. Next, I will now go to the features view to see the list of features in this sequence. And as you can see, there are 4,217 features. Currently, the features view displays the description of each feature. To view a more condensed version, I will uncheck the full descriptions option found in the lower left. What I would like to do now is to change the color of all of the coding sequence features that are in the forward direction to red and those that are in the reverse direction to blue. To do this, I will firstly sort the list of features by going to Features, Sort Feature List. I will sort the list by type and then by directionality and click OK. With the list now sorted, I will click on the first feature and shift click on the last coding sequence in the forward direction. Now I will go to Features, Feature Color and select Red. Next, I will select all of the coding sequences in the reverse direction by clicking on the first entry and shift clicking on the last. Again, I will go to Features, Feature Color and this time select Blue. Now if I go to Map View, I can see how these color changes have changed the appearance of the features. By using the zoom tools at the bottom, I can zoom in and scroll around the chromosome to easily identify the coding sequences based on their directionality. And that wraps up this video tutorial. You now understand what features are in SnapGene and how you can work with features to easily annotate your sequences of interest. For other SnapGene tutorials, check out the videos on the SnapGene website. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. It really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.